Well, good morning. Welcome to worship at Faith Presbyterian Church here this morning. We're glad to have you with us. And those of you who are with us in the sanctuary can smell the aroma of popcorn. You are at church. You're not at the movies, but we're blending the best of, of both worlds. One of our guiding principles for 2024 set forth by our elders was to have more fun. And so what's more fun than popcorn at 10 in the morning and a movie sermon series? We have a, a big day of celebrations today. We're going to celebrate our graduates today. And, of course, it's Memorial day weekend and so uh, we're kicking off summer we're glad to have you with us both here and online a special welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us on our live stream we're glad to have you with us uh, before we get started we want to take the opportunity and solicit prayers from you how can we be in prayer for you if you'll share your joys and concerns with us as a community uh, via a prayer card you should find one in the seat back in front of you it looks similar to this, and so if you would put that in that uh, basket there on the communion table when we rise and uh, mix for passing of the peace, then those are going to be read aloud during the prayers of the people unless you mark it confidential. And so let's begin our time of worship. Dear God, on this day of memory, to gather, to sing, and to pray, we remember the past and look to the future. We come before you, God, seeking your peace. Help us to find the path that leads to the peaceable kingdom. Open our eyes and the eyes of the nations to find a different path through the disagreements of life in this world. In this time of story, song, and prayer, may we be recommitted to being people of peace, true peace. May we catch a vision of how the world could live together. And so we echo the old prayers. Make us channels of your peace. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with us. Amen. To lead us in our call to worship is our worship leader for today, Steve Hansen. In a world filled with violence and war, we, we gather together, together to celebrate the, the promise of peace. In a world filled with tyranny and oppression, we, we gather together to celebrate the promise of justice for all. In a world filled with hunger and greed, we gather together to celebrate the promise of plenty for all. Our hope is in the name of the Almighty God, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of heaven and earth. Please stand as you're able to join us singing our opening hymn in the midst of New Dimensions, number 315 in the Glory to God hymnal.
join our hearts and our voices together as we pray our prayer of reconciliation, which is printed in your bulletin. Let's pray. God of every nation, as we remember those that gave their life for our sake, let us be stirred into action in their memory. We confess that we have not done all that is possible to promote peace and justice in our world. We have not loved our neighbors, let alone our enemies. Forgive us for failing to live up to your commandments. Empower us to work for your kingdom in this world. Hear us now, God, as we open our hearts to you. We give thanks as a renewed and forgiven people. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Today marks uh, the beginning of our summer music series, which is uh, kind of a surprise every week. And today we have a piano solo by James Chambers. So prepare to be blessed.
Thank you, James. That was lovely. Thank you, thank you. Before we pass the peace, I want to offer you, if you didn't get some popcorn on the way in, or if you have an empty bag and would like a refill, you're welcome to, to go back out and get some more for the rest of the service. And also, if you have a prayer request, now's the time to bring that card up for the basket. Now, grace and peace be with you. Let's rise and greet each other in Christian love. Right, I think we're all settling in for the most part. And now is the point where I get to remind you that we have so many ways to live into our faith here at Faith Presbyterian Church. Um, both on Sunday and throughout the week, uh, we have, uh, lost my clicker for a second, here it is. Um, we have an e-news that goes out on Wednesday. If you're not receiving that and would like to, please let us know, and we'll get you on that list. It has a complete listing of all the congregational life and upcoming opportunities to be uh, a part of uh, this church and, and live out your faith in, in various ways. Um, one of the uh, ways that we do that is through meeting together. In April, we had a series of family meetings, uh, is what we called them, and they were like small group gatherings in homes, and uh, we talked in broad strokes about what our hopes and dreams were for the church and what our anxieties and fears might be as we live into um, the third year with me here as your pastor. And so uh, I know that not everyone was able to attend one of those meetings uh, a date or time or had a conflict. And so as a follow-up, I wanted to summarize um, some of the common talking points and themes and also solicit some feedback uh, from those of you who weren't able to attend. And so I did that this week. You might have seen there's a Google form linked into our e -news. Um, it's called a congregational survey or something to that effect. But it has this graphic. We want to hear for you, from you. So look in the e-news for this uh, graphic and, and complete that form. Thank you to those of you who have already. It has just a series of open-ended questions. You can share as much or as little as you would like. But we would love to hear from all of our voices as we make our plans um, moving forward into our life together. Also, we have an opportunity this summer to partner with Shepherd of the Hills Presbyterian Church just down the road for their summer vacation Bible school. It's uh, about a month away, so it begins June 24th. Uh, it's an opportunity for really all of us, uh, whether you are a kid or not. Uh, if you have children or grandchildren, you'd like to register to participate. I believe the age range is three years old and potty trained up through rising fourth graders, but uh, teenagers, a youth, um, and adults of any age can volunteer and be a part of this fun week. I'm going to be there uh, partnering with the kids ministry at Shepherd of the Hills uh, and it's, it's a really uh, ex exhausting but it's an inspiring week. Uh, it's only three hours in the morning so if you have the time uh, we would love to have you uh, be a part of that party with us and if not we just solicit your prayers for all of those uh, that will be in attendance in one way or the other. The uh, registration links for these are also in the e-news or you can talk to me directly and I can help point you in the right direction. 
Uh, Julie Jerome spoke to us last week during this time about an opportunity we have coming up in the fall to partner with our local elementary school here, Travis Heights Elementary in our neighborhood, through an organization called Kids Hope USA. Kids Hope USA partners a church with a school uh, to provide mentors that are asked to give one hour per week to one child uh, in a very uh, structured and, and uh, equipped and supported mentoring program. And so we have committed to send some mentors into Travis Heights Elementary this fall, and we hope to uh, have you be a part of that in one way or another. If you don't have the time to mentor or you're not quite ready to take that step, we also solicit your prayers as a, as a prayer partner uh, for those of us who will be uh, going into the school. But thank you for those of you who have expressed interest to Julie. She is our director. Uh, for, for this church, working directly with Kids Hope and the administration at Travis Heights. And so you can speak to her for more information. And we are starting finally with much hype, uh, the soon-to-be critically acclaimed Summer at the Movie Sermon Series uh, today. It's going to take us all the way to July. So uh, we're starting that today, thus the popcorn and uh, the great aroma. I feel sorry for once for all of you who are watching in your pajamas at home because you don't get this beautiful smell and, and to have a little snack. Uh, but we are uh, launching into this sermon series together a little bit later, and I'm really excited about it. Next week, I'll, we'll take it one week at a time. So next week, we will be discussing uh, A Man Called Otto. It's a fairly recent movie starring Tom Hanks, my favorite. Uh, and so if you want to preview that this week, uh, either on your own or have an informal get-together with some friends, uh, I invite you to do that. But this will be next week's sermon on A Man Called Otto. So I'll just keep you apprised week by week. And today, as I mentioned at the beginning, is a special celebration Sunday where we honor graduates of every age and stage. And so I'll invite Anne to, to come forward. She represents the internal team and has done uh, quite a bit of preparation so that we can honor our graduates properly. She's also pulling double duty as the popcorn at the concession stand, so um, <laughs> Julie's going to make sure it doesn't burn, because this could go from really uh, aromatic to horrible pretty quick, so <laughs> thank you. You can see his, his cute little self up on the screen. He didn't let us know his future plans, but it probably involves kindergarten, right? Okay. Okay. It's not, is it on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, then um, Diane Shackman's grandson graduated from college, but I noticed she's not here today. And his name is Evan Cohen. Um, I'm not sure what college he, UT in Dallas. Yeah. And then um, Julie Jorger's daughter received her master's in education, oh, from Houston Tillotson. Very nice. Um, we have a few little things that I wanted to make sure. I'm just really proud of all of their accomplishments, and I know you are proud of them. Even graduating from preschool is, can even the day of graduation from preschool, I can tell you that those children um, are excited and nervous and proud. So I would like everybody to give an applaud for them. Thank you. Um, this is for Harbor, yes. Um, we tried to make sure to recognize everyone, and so, um, Hazel, congratulations. 
and Cole. It's hard to believe how fast they grow up. One of the things I wanted to mention was in baptism, when we baptize our children here, we make a commitment that we follow those children through the years. So I just want to remind you that the children that are down in the nursery, you may be sitting here one day and seeing them receive their graduation gifts. And it's always something I reflect on. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. One more round of applause. One of the ways we live into our faith is through acts of generosity. There are many ways to participate in the mission and ministry of Faith Church, but one, is, one way is through our gifts and offerings. Our gifts offer healing and hope to a world that desperately needs it. If you have physical gifts to offer today, you may place them in the collection plates, which will pass through, or in the wooden box in the narthex. If you prefer to give electronically, you can, may do so through the website, or by scanning the QR code on the back of your bulletin. And now remembering all that we have is a gift from God, let us return to God a portion of what we've been so generously given. God, shine your light and love upon these gifts and these givers. We offer ourselves as offerings, trusting that your spirit of power can make us instruments of your healing and wholeness. Through Christ we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated and prepare ourselves for a time of prayer. And take a deep breath and get comfortable in your pew as we approach our loving God. God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to pause and remember. And on this weekend of remembering, let us raise our consciousness toward those who have lost their lives in war this year and every year. May the people of our land and every land experience respect and reverence and reconciliation in the memory of those who have fallen. 
May we hear a call to build your realm where war is no longer necessary and peace is no longer considered unrealistic idealism. May we channel our pride and our patriotism towards critical self-reflection concerning our ideals as a nation so that we honor those who have passed on by becoming the best reflection of your peaceful will in the world. Keep us vigilant, vigilant to care and love one another. Remind us that it's in building peace that we show true strength. Encourage us that it is in conveying love that we bring hope to the future and compel us into serving others that we may bring your power to the weakest among us. Also come near to those in our community, those on our prayer list, those that we name before you now. We pray for James Chambers, who is approaching a second eye surgery. We pray for Janice Hansen, who will undergo a pacemaker implant. We pray for Laura Johnson for healing in her knee. She has a torn meniscus and is praying that she might avoid surgery. Loving Lord, we pray for these members of our community who need your care. And we also pray that you ease the suffering of the sick and speed the healing of all those in recovery. Comfort all who mourn and bring rest to all who are worn down. Surround the isolated with love and soothe the troubled minds of the anxious. Loving God, we offer these prayers to you. And now in the silence, we lift those that remain on our hearts and are known only to you. Hear our prayers. We lift these prayers to you, gracious God, confident that you hear us and you know our hearts. With hope, we join our voices with the voices of countless generations, languages, and communities as we pray the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So the moment is here. We have found summer. Summer's found us. It's been hot this weekend, right? Uh, but we are in the cool air conditioner of this uh, sanctuary. And uh, for the next six weeks, we will be looking for God on film. Um, I have lined out uh, in the e-news and on the website, I've, I've tried to choose uh, a movie from almost every genre uh, for the next six weeks. So if action superheroes aren't your thing, come back next week and we'll have Tom Hanks. So, uh, but we are going to start out uh, with Spider-Man today. It's a, it's a message of humility and, and sacrifice and redemption and there's all sorts of theological parallels that, that can be drawn. So... I'm excited to start off with this uh, modern rendition. Spider-Man is as old as time, right? He's uh, been a comic book hero forever. I, don't, I didn't look up when he was invented, but in my lifetime at least, there's been many, many reiterations of Spider-Man from, uh, from the animated page on a, on a comic book or animated film all the way to live action. And even the live action has been uh, resurrected several times. And so this is one of the most recent uh, reiterations. This movie that we're going to focus on today is it's called Spider-Man No Way Home, and it's actually the third in a series of the same type of um, story and, and, and film. Uh, it came out in 2021, which was one of the first movies that drew people, uh, I think, back into the theaters. I look, look up a few facts. Um, it grossed, a, it, it did okay, at $1.9 billion. Uh, it was the highest grossing film of 2021. And uh, I chose it because uh, I mentioned last week, it's my youngest son Grant's, uh, one of his favorite movies. He has this poster in his room. And so uh, I thought, why not? Let's dig in there and surely we can find 
God, God's everywhere. So surely God is in a film, in, uh, in Spider-Man film. So this one, because it is the third in the series, it picks up immediately where the second one left off. Um, I had to have Grant help me fill in the gaps a little bit because uh, this movie alone was two and a half hours, which you know if you watched it, and I didn't have time to, to watch the preceding one. So he kind of filled me in as to uh, what's going on when the movie starts. Uh, but basically what happens in the movie that precedes Spider-Man No Way Home is that uh, one of the evil villains has revealed Spider-Man's true identity, which is? Okay, okay all right. I'm guessing, I, I meant to have this caveat from the outset, um, I'm not a big uh, superhero type of fan. Um, and so if you are, if you're a Spider-Man aficionado or a huge fan of the Marvel Universe, I just probably should apologize right now because I'm not going to get everything right. This may be a little bit painful for you, uh, but I do think uh, I have some, some parallels to share between, uh, between these stories because a good movie is just a good story, right? And Jesus taught in stories all the time. So uh, yes, I'm guessing that uh, because I didn't hear a real hearty Peter Parker that um, maybe we're in the same boat, that we're not uh, experts in Spider-Man, so maybe I have a lot of grace in the crowd. That's great. But yes, Peter Parker is uh, an ordinary high school student, but he's not so ordinary. He's kind of uh, has these superpowers. Like he got bit by a spider, and um, so his, his secret identity, his true identity, has been revealed uh, at the beginning of this movie, which, uh, you know, in, in modern day, uh, sweeps the globe. Um, he's public enemy number one, this, this video... Uh, revealed him to be, uh, you know, in not a very good light. And so all of a sudden, everybody knows who Spider-Man really is, where Spider-Man really lives, and it causes all sorts of problems for Peter and his friends. This movie really centers around Peter and his girlfriend, MJ, and his best friend, Ned. Uh, like I said, they're high school students. They're trying to get into MIT, but MIT doesn't want anything to do with this nefarious Spider-Man. It's just too much, too much bad press. So that's how the movie starts. We witness Peter Parker grappling with all the consequences of his actions and all the responsibility of being Spider-Man. And so as his identity is revealed to the world pretty soon, it puts him in danger and also puts everyone around him that he loves and cares for in danger. So in seeking to reverse this, Peter approaches Dr. Strange, uh, a character uh, in this Marvel Universe, for a spell. He wants everyone to forget that he's Spider-Man. And of course... The spell goes awry because you got to get two and a half hours worth of action out of this. And so uh, chaos ensues and uh, villains from all these other universes enter into the world. Thus, we have the multiverse of, of Spider-Man. So you have to pay pretty close attention to kind of figure out uh, what's happening. It gets a little complicated. But basically, they're inundated with uh, basically every villain that Spider-Man's ever faced in any of these um, universes. And so the thing about villains... I really like villains. I like Disney villains. I like Marvel villains. I think they're interesting uh, because they are not one-dimensional either. They have an origin story. Uh, they have backstory. They weren't born evil. No one is. And so uh, one of the most infamous villains of Spider-Man is the green... Okay. Uh, <laughs> Robin knows Spider-Man really well. Uh, the rest of us are struggling through this. <coughs> Uh, but yes, the Green Goblin is uh, one of the most infamous villains of, of Spider-Man, uh, but he also has a true identity. His, his true name is Dr. Norman Osborn, and so we see that persona. Uh, he, he flips in and out of the evil and the, the original personas throughout the movie, and so one of my favorite scenes. I wasn't able to get the clip to, to share it with you today, but the Green Goblin visits uh, Peter Parker's closest living relative, Aunt May. Um, I remember in older movies, Aunt May was really decrepit. Uh, Aunt May is Marissa Tomei now in this movie, so <laughs> Aunt, Aunt May's got some, she's, she's improved uh, <laughs> over the years, uh, but Aunt May is a very philanthropic type of character, very Peter's uh, caretaker, uh, mother figure, and she works at a homeless shelter. And so Dr. Norman Osborne, who, who Peter knows is the Green Goblin, visits Aunt May and he kind of panics, but he's, he's seeking help. He knows that he is under uh, a spell or under an influence of, of evil and he really wants Spider-Man to help him. And so as much as Peter's uh, 
original in, in, um, instinct is to send him back where he came from. Uh, Aunt May says, we, we help people. This is what we do. And so uh, it's, it's a, good, a good scene to see the influence that, that she has on him. And uh, under the influence of the evil Green Goblin, uh, he has this very interesting quote, which I think segues us into our scripture. We are going to have some scripture today, believe it or not. Um, the Green Goblin tells Peter Parker, he's like, your weakness, Peter, is your morality. You're strong enough to have it all, but you're too weak to take it. And so that's an insult that the Green Goblin and all his villainous uh, jabs at Peter and um, is tempting uh, Peter with that, uh, that juxtaposition of uh, you can use your power to benefit yourself. Uh, if you're strong enough to take it, you don't have to always uh, use your powers to benefit others. But, of course, we know that that's not how superheroes work. So there is a segue here to Scripture. Uh, our Scripture today comes from one of the letters that the Apostle Paul wrote to the, uh, to the original churches in the New Testament. Our Scripture today is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. So here are these words of Scripture from the New Testament. Paul writes, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this scripture speaks of Jesus' ultimate humility and ultimate sacrifice. And it reminds us that Jesus was in the form of God. Jesus was God and even so chose not to cling to that divine status. Jesus was fully divine but also fully human. He emptied himself. He took on human form and became a servant. And his obedience led him ultimately to the cross, of course, where he gave his life for the redemption of all humanity. Jesus, of all people, had this ultimate power, and yet he humbles himself. So the first theme that we can draw from these parallel stories is humility. In Spider-Man, Peter Parker learns humility through his struggles. He's a young hero, and he starts out trying to balance this dual life, these dual identities. But throughout the films, he grows into someone who understands the weight of his role and the importance of putting others first. And as followers of Christ, we are called to live this life of humility as well. Pope John Paul II wrote a book a few years ago called Love and Responsibility and has a quote about humility that I wanted to share with you. He writes, Humility is the proper attitude toward all true greatness, including one's own greatness as a human being. We are called to humble ourselves like Jesus. As Paul writes, Well, Things happen back in the Spideyverse. Uh, the Green Goblin overtakes Dr. Osborne's more meek personality, and of course, a battle ensues. What would an action movie be without several battles? And this is a big one. And so, I've pulled a clip of some of the uh, some of the uh, collateral damage from this particular battle. Let's take a look. It's not my responsibility, mate.
outfit right there, in case you haven't seen it, but things aren't looking good for Aunt May there. Um, but this moment, the, the reason I chose that clip was uh, that, that first initial dialogue where May says to Peter, with great power comes great responsibility. And that's apparently an infamous Spider-Man quote that shows up in several of these films and, and iterations here. It comes from Aunt May, and uh, it's a turning point for Peter. This is the point in the movie where, where Peter realizes that his path is not about escaping his identity or his responsibilities, but embracing them, no matter the cost. With great power comes great responsibility, is what Aunt May says in the film. Um, it reminds me of something that my mom used to say uh, to me growing up. She said something very similar. She would say, to whom much is given, much is expected. Now, I thought she made that up. I was in my 40s, and I was in seminary, I'm embarrassed to tell you, when I realized that in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verse 48, Jesus says, from whom ever... Oh, let me start over. From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. So we have Aunt May. We have my mom. And then we have Jesus. And in churches, in church language, sometimes we shorten this and we paraphrase this concept. And we say this phrase, you might have heard it, that we're blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. And that leads us to our second theme, which is responsibility. Spider-Man's journey is marked by this realization that his powers come with a duty to protect and serve others, even at his own cost and even at his own loss. In other words, Peter shouldn't just use his powers to benefit himself, but to serve others. And who would have known it? Jesus said that first. What do you know? Jesus reminds us that in order to live a life of service, we need to humble ourselves. The Apostle Paul reminds us that today in our text as well. Reminds us that Jesus gives us the best example of humbling himself for the benefit of others. That we were blessed to be a blessing. And I don't believe in coincidences. I think the Holy Spirit works in and through us as we prepare for worship. And it's no coincidence that this is a pretty darn good message for graduation Sunday. In the words of Jesus and the Apostle Paul and even Aunt May, they're all our graduates at every level. Your responsibility is to take the gifts you've been given and let them guide you into a future so that you can change the world around you. Oftentimes, uh, I preach based on a revised common lectionary, which offers uh, a sampling of scriptures that are uh, parallel to the liturgical calendar and all the seasons of the church. And I kind of veer off script a little bit in the summer uh, because I want to do something fun like a movie series. And so this particular passage from Philippines isn't today's revised common lectionary. There's not churches all around the world talking about this uh, passage from Philippians, um, but we are. But traditionally, it shows up around Holy Week. In fact, it's usually a, a scripture for Palm Sunday. So in some of my research this week, I came across all these commentaries um, suggesting how to use it for Palm Sunday. And, and we're way far from Palm Sunday. But I did find a quote from um, the Episcopal priest, Barbara Brown Taylor, who I love. And you know I I loved a quoter, and uh, she had a, 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 a sentence here, just a couple of sentences that I think um, uh, are appropriate for, for today, even though it's in the middle of the summer, Memorial Day. Uh, she writes, on Palm Sunday, we do not focus on what we believe about Jesus. We focus on what Jesus did, and this is the part I liked, and what we are able to do because he did. We focus on what Jesus did and what we are able to do because he did. So a cool part of this um, particular film, and I think one of the reasons it was so well received by fans, is that because of this hole in the portal and all the multiverses, multiversing and all the things, um, there ends up being three 
Spider-Man. And fans loved it because they were played by the original actors, um, the Tobey Maguire from, from decades ago, and then the guy in the middle, I forgot his name. But they're, they were all three, uh, <laughs> they all three were there, and they were all uh, in, their, in their original Spidey suits, and they were similar, and they were the same, and then they were also different. And so today's not Palm Sunday, but today's Trinity Sunday, um, and it's one of the lesser known uh, Holy Sundays. Uh, We don't always make a big deal of Trinity Sunday, but I would like to just point out that three Peter Parkers, three Spider-Mans, and the Trinity, if I were a better theologian or a bigger Spider-Man nerd, that would have been a whole different sermon. That would have been really, really cool, but I'm not that cool, so I just thought I'd make that joke. Uh, but there is, there's, there's all sorts of directions to go with this if you're creative. Um, but these three Spider-Men, they, uh, they collude after, um, after the scene that we saw, which was incredibly sad and tragic. All three of these Spider-Men agree to try and cure or help the villains and not seek revenge. It's a, it's a turning point in the plot that it hinges on that they all decide to use their powers and and all the technology available to them for good and not for evil not just to send um, the villains back to their universe where they'll meet their own fate but to try and help them and reverse these things that are put into motion so they cooperate and they decide on a plan and it kind of works you know until it doesn't because two and a half hours is a really long time so things go wrong but finally we get towards the end of the movie and another battle battle scene, which I'll spare you, uh, but all three of these particular Spider-Men are pretty battle-weary, and Doctor Strange, this character from the beginning, is, is still trying his best uh, to help, and this is kind of the, the climax of, of the movie where um, they're under siege, they're under attack, um, there's seemingly overrun and, and, and outmatched, and so that's where we find our next clip, which comes towards the end of the movie. <laughs> the ending gets you. Uh, I was talking to somebody about that this morning. Surprisingly uh, sad at the end, uh, and that's not even the end. So if you've seen it, you know what I mean. There's, there's a final scene, which is definitely a tearjerker. But I love that clip because it's just a full circle moment for this movie that began uh, with everyone knowing his identity to the end, this ultimate humility, this ultimate sacrifice where no one will remember him. And so that's the third theme uh, that we pull. We have humility, we have responsibility, and then finally sacrifice, where Peter, Peter's final decision to allow Dr. Strange to cast this spell it makes everyone forget him. It highlights his willingness to sacrifice his personal happiness for the greater good. He, he makes a difficult choice for the greater good. And that's where the name of the movie comes, No Way Home, because for Peter, especially in that final scene, you realize there's no way home for him. Peter Parker has no way home, and that's where our stories diverge, because we do. God loves us way too much to let us remain unknown. I have this quote in my phone, in my notes page, that I scroll over every once in a while, and I think I'm, someday I'm going I'm to put that in the sermon, and I think today's a good spot for it. The quote is, you can't outwander or outwonder God's love. And so that's the good news for us, is that we do have a way home. We are sought out and relentlessly pursued 
by a God who loves us. And in response to that love, we are called to live a life of humble service, recognizing that our strengths and our blessings are not just for our own benefit, but to serve others. And when we res- accept the responsibility that comes with our faith, we can advocate for justice and compassion and love in this world that so desperately needs it. And then we are also called to make sacrifices, to empty ourselves, as the Apostle Paul writes, in big and small ways for the greater good of the world around us. So can we find God on film? Can we find God in this film? I think, I think we've done it, because in both this story of Spider-Man and the life of Jesus that we see in the Gospels, we see this profound truth that true heroism And divine love are found in humility, in responsibility, and sacrifice. And so, friends, let us strive to have that same mind as our Christ Jesus, living out these principles every day and be inspired both by God on film and God among us and within us to be agents of love and justice and healing in our world. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that our home is found in you. Let us be inspired to embody humility and love in our lives and seek to serve others with the selfless love of Christ, always remembering that true greatness comes not from being served but from serving. May we strive to have the mindset of Christ Jesus, finding our strength and humility and our purpose in sacrificial love. In short, may we be blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we sing our closing song, which sends us out to the service. The world God loves so much. Number 543, God be the love to search and keep me. imagine that there will be popcorn available in the fellowship hall after uh, worship for our fellowship time and there is also a uh, cake uh, because we are celebrating our graduates so go enjoy popcorn and cake and call it lunch and may the god the redeemer the creator the redeemer and the sustainer who we also call father son and holy spirit on this trinity sunday be and abide with you this day and forevermore amen go in peace Thank you.